I am so, so tired of listening to that music. <laughs> I was going to say. I am so tired of it listening to that triggers a trauma response. Music. Guys, welcome in to the PHNX Sun Devil Show, brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe, even leave a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. I am Anthony Totry, joined as always by Sean DePaz. Shane Diefenbach is helping the Suns crew out tonight, so it's just going to be Sean and I and Damon behind the Mac. It is time for the fourth straight walk of shame because ASU got absolutely embarrassed on the road by Washington State. Final score, 75-58. to 58. A lot to get into. No DJ Horn tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alonzo Gaffney got the start. DJ Horn reportedly out because of con- t- conduct detrimental to the team. Um, so definitely a lot to talk about there. Frankie had himself an evening. Dez shot well again tonight, but everything else kind of fell apart, and we're going to get into it. Uh, but before we do that, Sean, just initial reaction to seeing ASU's fourth straight loss. Man, it just seems like a switch has flipped. They don't seem like they are having as much fun or engaged or have as much energy as they did uh, for the majority of the season up until these last four games. Um, and that is, that is concerning. Not it's it's not so. If they have lo- had lost four games, but they were like still seemed like they believed it, they believed in themselves. It would be one thing, but. N- now it seems like it's just all on fire a little bit, um, and it's 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 certainly concerning. It's, I don't know, dude. To your point, right? It looks like this team lost the energy that they started the season with, right? Like if I showed mm-hmm. you the first five minutes of this game, and I turned on the tape from Creighton and showed you the first five minutes of that game, or the Michigan game, mm-hmm. it's not even the same team. No, it's not the team. At all, and I know there's a lot of people in the chat talking about Hurley and the state of the program and his future here. Um, we'll get into to all of that because we did talk about after Thursday's loss. We talked about what a snowball effect could do for Hurley, yeah. what it could do to this program um, in terms of the quote unquote big dance making making the tournament or whatever. Like at this point, you got to turn every everybody needs to turn the the tournament talk off at this point. Yeah, right now it is you got to figure out. What is wrong with this basketball team? You got to figure out why they can't score offensively. Um, like 58 points again, not going to cut it at all. You got zero points from Alonzo Gaffney, um, which again, he's starting. You yeah. should score. You got it. You got to make a bucket, dude. Like you cannot well, play a man, whole. I game. get it's his birthday, but why the hell did he start? Like I, it was funny because we had all these conversations about. Potentially DJ getting benched and what like uh, how they might change the lineup. Gaffney starting was never a part of those conversations. Um, Not at all. I still much more rather would have seen them. Rock Nunez. Put a yeah yeah or just any of the guards to be honest over uh, Gaffney? over Gaffney. Yeah, yeah, I would have almost rather had Enoch. No, no, that's not true. Only one player finished with a uh, positive plus minus for the Sun Devils. Uh, and it was Duke Brennan. That's good. Who played four minutes? I, but I will say though, those four minutes, like they they looked really good. It's like, what he, he does though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I like I, I, there had been a couple of uh, I would say a couple of games where I was like, oh, we haven't had those games where it's like you have to say Duke Brennan's name. Um, and it was only four minutes, but like I, he definitely I think made an impact in those in those minutes, um, especially in the first half. It was it was nice. I'm trying. I guess you got to find something positive out of this, because um, there wasn't a lot. Yeah, not at all. If I told you going into any, any Pac-12 game, you got a roster ten deep, right? How many points would you think that you need out of your bench to feel comfortable going into that game? Um, more than seven. I'll say that more than seven. Seven points from a roster that goes ten deep. Yeah, but like I've said, I, I we gotta stop saying this ten deep bullshit. This team, this team's not ten deep. Alonzo Gaffney doesn't score. He, he's not. But he started. I know. Technically, they go that deep. I know. Luther they, didn't they, score they put ten different bodies on the floor, but this team is not ten deep. They do not have ten people who can contribute, and that was shown again tonight. Alonzo Gaffney does not contribute anything to this team at all. Has not. Has not at all this year. Um, like. 10 deep cool like 
And the side trip with Carrie, like it, yeah. Why Wazoo did like they 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 shot really well from I mean, no, nah, it's not even that they shot really well, but they shot well enough and in volume from we three. We knew that this team could do that though. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, but this team did nothing about it. So uh, tough, a recipe for disaster, my friend. Yeah. Let's get into the numbers of tonight's game. Um, obviously the only one that matters is that final score, 75 to 58. Again, ASU dropping now its fourth consecutive game. Um, got swept by the the Washington schools this past week, so that's mm-hmm. not fantastic. Um, in terms of shooting the ball, right? The Cougars 36.9% to ASU's 33.9. So in, in reality, they didn't shoot too much better no. than ASU. You look at that three point percentage, 33% for ASU um, to Wazoo's 35%. <laughs> In terms of free throw numbers, 15 of 19 for ASU, 13 of 18 for Washington State. And then this is the real discrepancy here. In terms of rebounding, ASU mm-hmm. got out-rebounded 47 to 33. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to uh, essentially substitute a forward for a guard in your starting lineup, you probably shouldn't have one of your worst margin-wise, worst rebounding performances of the year. And I don't know, Gaffney's not like, not that he's not a guy that really plays in the paint, but still. Um, he, where does he play though? Because um, like he doesn't, he doesn't like. Another he's school. Just, he's just there. He's just there on the bench. He's just there. The, the, the Y maybe. He's just uh, there. Just not here, please. Why? I. Yeah, man. I, it's it's tough because yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know that the, <laughs> trolls in the chat saying that the offense is awful. It's not a troll. It's true. I was going to say, surprise, surprise. I agree with you. (laughs) It's so bad. And the problem is, is that you can, this team has been able to live with that to a certain extent because their defense has been so good. Their, at least perimeter defense was non-existent tonight. Uh, Again, I guess not. They just shot so many damn threes. They just shot so many damn threes. It's, I mean, look, you, I don't know. It's, it's spiraling, dude. Like, 34. Oh, yeah. No, that's on fire. 34 of ASU's 56 shots tonight came from three people. Des Cambridge, <laughs> Frankie Collins, and Warren Washington. And none of them made more than five. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that's good. frustrating. That's the thing that's frustrating because even when you you you, you want to give guys their, their flowers or whatever, and you get like their, uh, I get I hesitate to even call them bright spots, but the few bright spots offensively and in Frankie and Des, they were not efficient at all. So like it, it is really just a matter of, of no one else on this team being an offensive threat and them being having the entirety response, the entire responsibility offensively. Yeah. Um, I think Warren was good um, at, at parts, as, but like, I think in general he was good and he, he went four for nine. So not as inefficient as some of the others. No, but something that he did more than anybody else tonight was turn the ball over. He had yes, five turnovers tonight. That's true. Very um, true. And in terms of Washington State, three point percentage, I think we had the number up there like thirty three percent. They actually shot forty one percent from behind the arc. They had two players tonight make five or more threes, um, which <laughs> it's going to be tough to beat anybody when you've got a team doing that. Uh, yeah. How much of tonight's loss and the last couple losses are on Bobby? Because I feel like this one specifically, I I don't want to put this one solely on Bobby. This one more so than the others felt like a lack of energy and a yeah. lack of just passion and hustle and everything. And I don't know if it's because of the whole DJ Horn situation, but that's what it felt like tonight. It felt like they just weren't in it. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like you could say that for the last three games. I, I, I don't like, I guess on a game to game basis, it's hard to necessarily blame him, but when a team loses four straight games, you got to look at the top. Like you got to you got to start pointing fingers at the head coach to a certain extent, I think, um, especially when it's a result of or at least seemingly a result of guys losing focus, losing energy, losing like th- their passion or commitment, whatever it is. Like, it, I feel like part of that you have to blame on Bobby for sure. Um, I, I, I Joe puts that. I don't think the, the UCLA one is different. Like that was uh, that was ASU playing relatively well against just a really good team. But since then, man, it does see it. It seems like. They lost their will to to try. It's like and they win. felt the season ended. Yeah, that night. yeah, which is like which is weird because 
it, I it think to, to most of us, it was an encouraging sign. Like, yeah. obviously, it was disappointing, but it was encouraging. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. It's, I, I definitely think Bobby deserves a, a, a large part of the blame because when you start, when you just kind of collapse like this, like I said, you have to look at the, the, the head of the snake, and I think that is Bobby. Yeah. And, I mean, another thing that we haven't talked too much about, and I know that this this part of the conversation is, I don't want to say it's going to get weird, but it's almost a little unfair because coming into the season, we weren't expecting Devin Cambridge to really be that much of a scorer. Yeah. But, like, there was a point in the season where he was contributing 10, 12, 14 points a night, and you're like, okay, we're getting some offensive efficiency. We're getting some buckets from him, right? As of late, right, he had eight points tonight in 28 minutes, and I know he's not the the shooter, right? But, like, you need somebody has to step up. Somebody has to. It yeah. can't be Desmond Cambridge every single night. It can't be. But I, I know Frankie scored 16 tonight, but that wasn't good enough either. Yeah, I, I, I think we need to we are at a point where we need to like we need to to I guess kind of revisit some of our what we thought about this team early on. Because I think we got a little excited with guys playing above what they are, mm-hmm. like specifically a guy like Dev. Um, that he this is this this is the player he is. Like he he was never supposed to be a good shooter or a good scorer. And I think when you look at kind of this roster the way it is act, it is actually built, you don't you just simply don't have you don't have offense anywhere. DJ has always been wildly inconsistent. He's I think worse this year than he is. He was last year, but he's always been a wildly inconsistent shooter. Um, Warren was not here for his offensive being an offensive pro or his offensive prowess. Uh, like I already talked about Dev Frankie. We was uh, the great unknown. And it's clearly just not really an offensive guy. You look around and it's like, who are the two people that you that really that really can get a I, three? I guess the three people that can really get a bucket. It is DJ Horn, who got his ass suspended today for whatever reason. Dev or Dez, who is wildly inconsistent, and sometimes and, takes some ridiculous. Shots. Yeah, and then Austin Nunez, who's a freshman. Like it, it's it's the, the it is just there's a roster where you're, you, you if you get offensive production, awesome. Like it, it's like that's great. You got lucky that day, but it's real. And it's ultimately the defense that it's you not need. sustainable. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable when when it it. It is sustainable, but it's not sustainable when your team seems to have lost their energy and, and commitment. Because that is what that did, this team defensively thrived off of: yeah. was the energy and their commitment to the, the belief in it. And it doesn't seem like they have that anymore. Now the defense is 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 not the same that it was. Um, it is, I'm not going to say here in ten; it's terrible. I didn't get ninety dropped on them, but it's still not great. Like, um, it, it, it's it's. The only thing that you could rely on with this team, even when things were going well, was their 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 energy and their defense, and now that's gone. Yeah, I, JJ brings up a, a phenomenal point. Uh, this is a microcosm of college basketball, but it's amazing how much something can change in a week. He brings up the fact that you were up on the number yeah. five team in the country just a couple of weeks ago. You were playing for first place in the conference, and now you have slid to a point where, in terms of a Pac-12 tournament top four team like you could let's again let's pump the brakes on that conversation because <laughs> right now this doesn't look like a top four team no I don't. This, this this team looks closer to the stanford cal oregon state conversation than it does the usc utah and oregon conversation yeah i mean shit stanford beat oregon <laughs> i don't think that this team beats oregon right now uh, which is crazy because we're not next week. We're, you, but yeah, but we're not that far removed from them kicking the shit out of Oregon. And I, <laughs> I had now at this point have no confidence that they would not. Not only would they not be able to kick the shit out of them, but that they'd even be able to win. So I mean, yeah, they almost lost by twenty tonight. Yeah, against a team that I think we can all agree is worse than Oregon. Yeah. Um, and I get it's a Pac-12 and weird things happen, right? Like I mean, Arizona is clearly a very, very good team, and you look at the teams that they've lost to this year. Um, it's just, it's weird things happen, but <laughs> this is not that <laughs> this is yeah. ASU just sucking now. Well, hopefully you guys weren't as dumb as me and, uh, decided to put money on ASU to oh, win. Oh, no, you did not. I did. I did. I bet on ASU to win. In reality, I should have bet on Washington state, Yeah, you should. Have. Uh, but I, I saw the plus money and I just felt inclined. 
like ah the value the values there they're a team looking to get back on track yeah i right? understand the thought like process there's there's, val- sure. there's a little bit of value there it's okay because it's still a lot of sports that i can bet on and that you guys can bet on specifically talking the nfl playoffs you got some big games tomorrow download the DraftKings sportsbook app and use code phnx new customers can bet five dollars on the conference championships and get 200 in free bets instantly only a DraftKings sportsbook with code PHNX minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for more details. Sean, do you have a DraftKings sportsbook pick of the week? It's uh, I've just got to rock with it. Kansas City Chiefs minus 125. Wow. I believe in I believe in them. I believe You're rocking in them. with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. And if you are worried about that game, I'll give you another one. 49ers money line plus 130. Wow. I think the Niners win. There's uh, a lot of value. And it's plus money. Why not? Why not? I also they boosted Christian McCaffrey. Oh, that's my actually that's my DraftKings sports pick of the week. They have a DraftKings sports with boost. Christian McCaffrey anytime touchdown scorer plus one fifty. Um, take it. Opt yeah. into the boost and take it. I did. Uh, I'm gonna go Bengals Chiefs. Let's take it's forty eight points. Forty eight. I'm taking over. I like it. I'm taking yeah. over forty eight points. Uh, I think the Bengals win thirty four thirty one. Um, so take that for what you will, but that hits the forty eight. Uh, we'll see what happens again. Those are DraftKings Sportsbook picks of the week, minimum age, and eligibility restrictions apply to show notes for more details. Let's get into bottle service uh, because I know it wasn't the greatest evening. It hasn't been phenomenal as of late, right? Yeah. But somebody deserves some drinks. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are they going to be sipping on? What is Frankie Collins sipping on tonight? Um, I don't know. Pedialyte. Pedialyte? <laughs> like, just get re, re, rehydrated. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, Frankie Collins, 16 points, six boards, three steals. Um, like, again, he, he stuffed the stat sheet, but it just wasn't enough, man. It wasn't enough from him. No, it wasn't. I mean, I Jacob mentioned it much earlier in the chat, um, and it was I did like seeing him be more aggressive. Like, I, I he, he wasn't bad. Like, yeah, I, I think I, I liked parts of his game. Yeah. Um, Getting six rebounds from him, three steals from him are nice. Um, it, like as that is a nice little nugget. But I mean, we, we like you said, we had to give it to somebody. But ultimately, he wasn't very efficient. Like no one here was what was really that that great. Um, but sixteen points, and there, like I said, there were parts of it that I, I liked. So, um, I guess so it's look in terms of Frankie Collins, right? There is, and we've talked about this, the way his game is played. It doesn't feel, it feels like he has two different types of players and he's struggling. And again, this is just my perspective. It looks like he is struggling to combine the two, to, to combine the yeah. athlete score that he is physically capable of being and then also being a true point guard that is a facilitator. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, He's struggling to combine the two. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying the other day, I uh, it seems like he is like a a, a wing or, or or a two trapped in a point guard's body, and he like is kind of like he's a con- constantly battling with that. Um, it, it, it I, you do have to remember that this is really his first year of playing college basketball. But so, I mean, so with Austin Nunez. No, I know, I know. I mean, it's it is. I mean, some people are going to be better than others. That's like I mean, I just think Austin is. is ultimately going to be a better basketball player than Frankie. But, like, it, it is I, – I, he is still a young player. This is not a guy that is, like, is, is not a one-and-done talent. Like he, yeah. he's gonna, he takes a little bit of time to develop. I think he can develop, which doesn't help us right now. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think he has the – I think he has the, the kind of the raw pieces there to be – To be that guy. Uh, to be that guy. I just think, like you said, he kind of has to figure out how to, how to put it all together. Um, and the game game will slow down for him eventually. I think that is a big part of it. I think it it just at times seems like it's a little too fast for him. Yeah. Um, and that's why he some kind of struggles uh, and maybe on that decision making whether or not he should drive it or not type thing. Yeah, because he's physically gifted. Yeah, we, we know he what is. he's, he's capable a, he's of an as athlete, a scorer. Man. Yeah. And you look at you look at the first couple of games of the season, right, where he wasn't really much of a facilitator at all, but he was dropping twenty a night, and we're like, okay, like he he's shooting the ball a lot, which is fine. They're winning. They're he's doing his thing, and then it was like, okay. We're going to transform into that facilitator a little bit. We're going to have six points, eight assists, four boards, right? We're going to be the guy that kind of like can do everything. And when he is forced into this role, which again, 
I don't want to put the blame on him in this specific situation, right? Because let's be real. At a certain point, you're a Division One basketball player and your team continues to struggle shooting the ball. Yeah, yeah. No matter your role, it's like, if you're that guy, you're like, I, then I'm going to shoot us out of this. Yeah. Like, you have to. So, honestly, props to him for saying, look, I, I'm going to take the most shots of anybody on the team tonight. That might not be my role. That might not be my game plan. But right now, nobody else is doing it. Yeah. Outside of Des Cambridge, nobody else. Like, if I was Des, I would go back into this locker room, and I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. No, nah, yeah. I mean, as far as Frank is concerned, he seems like the kind of guy that would, like, would just, I mean, this is no duh, but, like, we just would thrive around talent, <laughs> like, around yeah. guys who are just really good at basketball. Like, he could be a really good point guard on a really good team. Um, this is not, I mean, he's not LeBron James. He's not going to make these guys turn into all-stars. Um, but it, it is, it is, I mean, it's, it's the same shit. It, it is just really frustrating that you have no one you can rely on when it comes to scoring. Like, there is no winning a high scoring shootout with this team. Um, unless you get lucky, like it's going to be the rare occasion. Yeah. You might not be able to rely on ASU basketball guys, but you can rely on Four Peaks Facts. to get you through some of these games. They have got some new beers on the way. Let's talk about the Staycation Super Juicy IPA, the Recreational Juice Dank IPA. I don't know about you. I'm a giant fan of IPAs. I do like IPAs. They're like, and I also love beer, so it gives me the perfect of like a fruity cocktail and a beer almost. Mm. Um, and they smack because they that's smack. what Four Peaks does. All they do. I could use a few right now. They don't miss guys they don't miss the big game the super bowl is right around the corner and you guys should be enjoying a nice four peaks beverage during the big game and honestly during all your favorite sporting events because they're gonna get you through it ASU basketball the super bowl your kids little league game like sneaking in through the way. suns as they find a way to go to overtime with the spurs oh boy yeah it was one of those days but hey suns crew gotta watch their game in some comfy more furniture. Mm, they did, uh, as did we, which is, it is always, like, if you're going to be sad, at least be comfy and sad, I always say. Mm. Um, that's, like, my go-to catchphrase. Comfy and sad should be, like, a song. I'm surprised it's not. Comfy and sad, bad band name. Mm. It's Good a vibe, though. It's a vibe. Kind of, yeah, like, a little bedroom pop. Mm. Comfy and sad. Yep. Yeah. I could see that. That would actually be really popular amongst, like, I don't know, everybody, college freshmen with, <laughs> with uh, fairy lights and, and mm. uh, tapestry. Of that live room. in Washington? I live in Washington. Sure. Yeah. yeah why not? Um, yeah. More furniture. The only nice part about tonight um, and getting to see Toe Tree. Um, Nux. Um, visit more furniture on the cross streets of 44th and McDowell and use the promo code PHNX to get free delivery and installation on any purchase of $999 or more. Uh, yeah. You know, I think about that sometimes when I get furniture. I'm like, oh, this looks nice. I don't think about the fact that I'm going to have to like, like, my, my couch that you you helped me with yeah uh then i'm gonna have to like uh pick it up and bring it in and set it up myself we did that in the rain yeah we did it in the rain promo code phnx you won't have to do that with your remote furniture um but it's a limited limited time offer it's only valid until the 31st a couple yeah, days three more days, days exclusively for our phnx listeners so take advantage right now one more thing that you guys can do before we continue on with the post game show uh go to burrito express i i have i went today me too yeah I I have a new burrito. Let's hear it. It is the it is the steak and eggs. If you say add bacon, I'm gonna. No, I love add okay. I, I add bacon chore, but uh, it's just no tomatoes. Add cheese. I know you're not okay. a cheese guy, but I didn't realize how much I I, I like the onions really really they shined. Smacked. They really shined in this burrito. It was it was so good. I love their steak is so good, and I love the potatoes. Like I, obviously, I always love my breakfast supreme, but. It's when you, you, there's a lot going on there. And sometimes when you simple it down, you can appreciate some of the ingredients Absolutely. a little more. Absolutely. Mm. Schmacked. Well, and so look, we may or may not have drank too much Four Peaks last night. Yeah. It's the hangover um, here, man. So, was hungover. The Tempe location was popping today. It was. It, literally, it was, it was. popping this morning. And I got two steak and eggs, added the bacon, and I was hungover in bed all day long. But it was okay because mm -hmm. every couple hours I was like, ah, it's time to... Unwrap another. One. Yeah, I was. I was literally. I went. I had to. I had to go Uber to go get my car this morning. Side tripping with carry man. Told y'all about steak and egg. Remember, drink responsibly. Yes. Um, and don't drive when you drink, which is why I had to go get my car this morning. Um, and since I was out, you know, I was in Scottsdale. I just shot over to Tempe, got my burrito, got went home, turned on the U of A game. 
no lights on, hood up. Comfy my, and sad? Just comfy, just comfy and sad. <laughs> eating my, eating my, well, I wasn't sad because I was eating my burrito. Ah. Um, but as soon as I was, I was actually super sad when I finished. Just like, fuck, I should have gotten two. Yeah. But they're the the best burritos of all time. Yes, 100%. Guys, time. buy a $25 Burrito Express gift card, and you're going to get one of those free burritos we we're talking about. Head over to your nearby Burrito Express location today and give them a follow on social at Burrito. EXP. Let's continue on with this post game show. Um, and guys, we got forty plus people in here. Hit that like button. It's yeah. super easy. Hit the thumbs up, guys. Yeah. Drop a comment. Let us know where you're at, where you're watching this uh, the post game show, um, and what you enjoy. Okay, guys. Uh, let's get an aftertaste. Sean, what was heaved into your kisser? Oh man. Um, <sighs> bleach. Ooh. I didn't enjoy it, and I feel like I'm dying. Um, or maybe just like gasoline and then a match because i feel like i'm on fire um and everything's on fire and we're all on fire and we're in hell um <laughs> that took a turn <laughs> bleach Dude, i'm on fire it sucks i'm it on sucks. fire i hate it here i hate i fucking hate it here toe tree <laughs> like i oh, oh uh, 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 you know i spent so much time being like oh at least we got basketball because football sucked and now we're here and it was like oh this is awesome Basketball is so good. You know what this is like? I didn't is... expect this. And then they did this. And I'm like, oh, right, right. Why did I expect more? You seen Talladega Nights? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay. This well, is this is great comedy movie. This is where like Will Ferrell is on fire, where he's actually yeah, not, he's on, fire. not he's like, on fire. He's like, I'm on fire. Oh, I'm on fire. Take it, he strips down to his underwear. And then it cuts back to his buddy, and it's just like the Pac-12 logo. And they're like, you're not on fire. <laughs> you're not on fire, Ricky. Except, the, the Except he's he is. He is actually on fire this time. Um, no, this... Ooh, what does this taste like? I don't know. I feel like Tina has an idea of what it tastes like. I'm not going to say it, Tina. I'm not going to say it. Uh, this tastes like... Ooh, this tastes like throw up in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Ooh, this tastes like piss. <laughs> no, this tastes like... You know when you're like... You just throw up a little yeah, bit in burns. your mouth? Yeah. And it's just like, ooh. For like a solid five minutes, it's just like, ooh. Like, I, that's all you taste? Yeah. That's exactly what this is. But this is like every Thursday and Saturday for the last two weeks at exactly 8 p.m. I throw up a little bit in my mouth, and it's because of this basketball team. That's exactly what this is like. I, I, I mean, credit to you for keeping it in because I'm ready to fucking blow chunks all over <laughs> What a DFA. Visual. What All over DFA? Yeah, it, it oh, needs new dude. paint. <laughs> I don't know if the plumbing system there can take that oh yeah that's a very good point i'm gonna end up we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna have to game cancel canceled. the game uh sean de pause <laughs> threw up in dfa uh no it's it's tough we've talked a lot about des we've talked a lot about frankie let's get into the bench guys a little bit um because we talked about how going into this game in almost every game you're like okay this roster goes 10 deep and i know you don't like the, the mm. 10 deep because there's a lot of guys on this team that can't necessarily um, Fucking the starting line. The starting lineup didn't even go five deep today. No, they didn't. <laughs> uh, but they never go five deep. Yeah. Um, Luther didn't score. Mm. Uh, Jemiah Neal is incredibly frustrating to watch play basketball he because is. he has. He's a physical freak. He, if he you really look is. at him, you're like. As soon as, broke a backboard. As in high soon school. as he steps on the court, you're like Jemiah Neal's a dog. Yeah. And then you watch him arms. shoot the basketball, and you're like, oh, you are. You're a rescue. That's like you're not you're not that kind of dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all we heard. You're like, all we heard in fucking training camp or whatever was like Jemiah Neal, Jemiah Neal. He's gonna be that guy. He's gonna be the difference maker for this team. Guess what? He's not. He is not at all. No. Uh, I, I, I I think maybe this is something that specifically Shane and I did to ourselves because we saw him uh, practice and we got really excited and um. Just maybe thought he was going to take a, a way bigger leap than we should have thought he was going to make. Um, but it, it, he is more or less uh, like uh, I'm a fan, but a non-contributor on this team. And it seems like there are too many guys you can point to who get minutes, like not, maybe not, not significant minutes, but play and are still non-contributors. Um, so it's frustrating. But also, it shouldn't be at a point where we're looking at Jemiah Neal and be like, why aren't you producing? Um, yeah, because he's there's off like the bench. seven guys ahead of him that should be producing that ultimately aren't. Um, so it, it's 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 bad for him. It's bad for everybody. It's pathetic to be quite frank. It's the same team. Yeah, every I, single night it's the same team. So ignoring the fact that he is not, ha, let me be nice, has not been good at basketball this year. 
Are we talking about DJ Horn or Jamal? No, Alonzo Gaffney. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I just, what did you, like, in, in... Sorry, there's so many bad players This right game now. aside, like, it just, the suspension aside, all of it. Like, what do you think in general about going to that lineup? Or, or I guess in general about going to a bigger starting lineup? Like, assume that Gaffney actually could contribute. Or he's I, having I, a game where he hits a couple corner threes. Like, what do you think of, of that lineup? As I'm going to, bigger. But yeah. I'm fine yeah. with it. But I don't like going Gaffney over Duke. Um, mm. I would prefer Duke. I would prefer. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'd prefer Enoch. The um, problem. The problem is that neither of those guys, at least even even, pose the threat of, of stretching the floor wait, the way but Gaffney that's does. Fine. But you you put Alonzo out there in hopes that he does that, right? But let's be real. He took two threes tonight. Missed them both. And had three fouls. Yeah. No, no, I mean, there's no reason to suggest... Like, you're just putting him out there as the, the potential that he could shoot a three. Yeah, That's I, fine. If I'm the defense, I'm not respecting that. You want that shot? Fucking take it. So, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm with Joe. I, I, would, I would rather him shoot threes over Dev at this point. Um, but what do you make, then, of him not starting what seems like the obvious cho choice in this situation in Austin Nunez? What do you make of that? Do you think it's just... Like, I think Bobby thought that strategically going bigger was the better fit against Washington State, which I, I respect. Like, he's the yeah. coach. He knows what he's doing um, way more so than we do. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I totally respect him on that. But I think given the way that the last game ended, right, where Austin Nunez is, was the sole reason that you even got that game to overtime. Yeah. And he was, and he has been over the last – Three games, I'd say. He's been your energizer, buddy. And this entire season has undeniably, in every single game, been, he's been a fun. bigger... Yeah, but he's been a, a bigger and more important and better player than Alonzo Gaffney has all year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you, he was your most important player coming out of the Washington loss. Yeah, and, right? and if you're worried about like his youth or, or giving him all those minutes, whatever it is, honestly, start... Start Luther Muhammad, man. I would, I'm fine with I that too. Hate it. I I'm fine with love Luther to too. see him get more minutes. Um, Joe does make a good point. If you if you start Duke, then Enoch has to play. That's fine. I'm at this point. I'm fine. Something's got to get fixed because right now Alonzo Gaffney is not the answer. DJ yeah. Horn is busy getting suspended and being inconsistent offensively. Um, like it's not good enough. Like no. that, and I know I mean, I've yeah. said this before, right? I I, I look at the numbers. And numbers only tell you so much, right? But just watching the game, you watch them run their offense, their offense, and it's not good enough. Yeah. I should not be able to, and fans should not turn on a Saturday game between two Division I basketball programs and look and say, See their team score that's points. not good enough. Yeah. That's like, I'm going to, again, that's not good enough. And if I'm Bobby Hurley, that's what I'm saying, right? If I'm Bobby Hurley and I need to get my team back to where they want to be, back to where my job is comfortable, right? Then that's what you say. You sit them down in that locker room and you say, look, guys, you have high aspirations. You want to be a top four team in the Pac-12. You want to make a run in the big dance. You want to beat teams like UCLA and Arizona. Well, guess what? What you've done for the last... Six, seven, eight halves, not good enough. Nope. Like, be better. Legit. Be yeah, better. But Bobby has to have that conversation with himself, too. Like, yeah, he, he, he yeah. does. Absolutely. And not just him, the, the entire coaching staff. That, that's, again, that's something that we don't talk about that nobody talks about in college basketball. You see that one head coach, he gets all the love, he gets all the blame. There are a lot of seats on that bench, and every single person that wears that pitchfork, on that ASU basketball bench needs to have that conversation with them because what they've done the last four games, you've got to throw it out. You got to throw it out. You got to start over because right now there is no tournament talk there. ASU basketball is not a tournament team right now. No, by any means, they're going to have to fight their ass off to make it back into that spot. And maybe not because of their own fault, right? Teams go on slides, team lose like three, four games, whatever it happens. But to that point, you've got to know that you're getting caught. Oregon, to your point, has played a lot better recently. Mm -hmm. Washington State, they're playing a lot better recently. 
Washington, they're playing a lot better recently. USC, we know what UCLA and U of A are. This is not a conference that you can afford to lose three or four games and still expect to be chilling with your, your Pac-12 tournament buy or your spot in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's just simply not the case. Yeah, no. I mean, you're not wrong. A uh, couple of things in the comments I wanted to address. Um, versus DJ Bagley, or no, I... I I don't think I don't think so because I mean you you knew who Bagley was you knew who the Bagleys were and you also know who DJ was like uh, DJ has shown that he is a leader on this team so he probably got frustrated and did something wrong and deserved the suspension but after probably getting the and again this is speculation but getting the one minute in the second half yeah Washington I imagine there was some frustration he's he's a competitor like I'm sure that it didn't sit well I'm not that it excuses it but I, I just think you see we know who he is as a guy, and to think that he would go as far as as I guess Bagley did, I I don't see this possibility. Um, but on the topic of Bagley, I said this the other day. I I don't think Bagley is the <laughs> Bagley is not not the answer. I think he helps scoring wise at moments, but I don't think you uh, at this point you got. I guess you have to ask whether it even matters anymore. But um, I don't think you get to this point. I don't think you have the the. What is it? Fifteen wins, the, either six conference wins if Gal or if uh, Bagley's still on the team. Yeah, because um, I think their energy and their vibes were what made them so successful early on, um, and I don't think you have that with Bagley. So yeah, that's absolutely fair. Uh, look, guys, before we continue on with the show, I want to tell you guys where you can get some sweet deals to maybe go to an ASU basketball mm. game or really just any sporting event in general. Because I'm not going to blame you if you wouldn't want to go watch this basketball team the way they're currently playing. Yeah. You should still go out, still support ASU athletics. Um, in any way you can, and if you're going to do so, and if you're going to go to a game, get your tickets on game time because you guys can save up to 60% on tickets when you buy tickets last minute. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the description. I'm curious what the deals you could get on some playoff tickets Ooh, on game time. Playoff tickets? As an yeah. NFL playoff As an NFL playoff tickets. Because Ooh. you know those things are those, those things are pricey. Yeah. yeah. Right? I Mm, I'm curious. Would you rather go? Would you rather look at Burrowhead? I mean Arrowhead, or um, I honestly started typing in Burrowhead. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> oh man, I'm losing it. Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, damn, you can get into the AFC Championship for only 177 dollars. Real talk? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, at, at Arrowhead. Game time. That's what we're saying. It's the place to get your tickets. Get them. Uh, and the place to get your food. Ooh. Illegal Pete. I honestly. So it's it's, it's, a, it's out of the way, and it's Saturday night. But illegal pizza is so good, I might drive down to Mill and get illegal pizza after Yo, I'm the show. I illegal pizza and a mark. I I might. Um, I'm and if you want to too, get down to their their Mill location. Um, it, I mean their their food is good, their drinks are good, the vibes are good. Like it is just it's so cool in there. Um, all like the people that work there look like they were made to work at illegal Pete's. I don't know how to explain it. You just got to go and see it for yourself. <laughs> They've just got like the perfect vibe. Um, I love it. I, I genuinely love illegal Pete's. Like I was, it, 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 the sad thing is there's a Chipotle right across the street and it's kind of ruined it for me because every time I eat it, it's like, ah, I was just too lazy to go to illegal Pete's. And illegal Pete's, <laughs> illegal Pete's, not only is their food better, but their prices are better too. Like at this point, yeah, like you can get all your food and a cocktail for yeah. the amount and that you would get like a Chipotle burrito. I know, I know you're not a huge cheese guy. I'm a huge cheese I, guy. Well, look, well, I, love I know, cheese, I know, bro. I, know. I love you cheese. Let's not put yeah. that out there. I know. I'm, you're, I mean, it you're not a huge cheese guy, not because you don't like it, but for other reasons. My tummy don't. Yeah. It's like Chipotle's World War Chipotle's II. queso <laughs> is dog shit. I'm gonna just say it. it's dog shit. I didn't even know they had queso. Exactly. 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 Illegal piece queso and fuego. Um, check them out. Little Pete's, Pete's, get, get it, it in you. <laughs> yeah. Flawless. Uh, let's get to the Bobby board. See what's uh, cooking over the course of uh, the What's next cooking? A lot of gray weeks. circles. Ooh. Oh, oof, 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 oof. I swear to God, if this team loses to Oregon State. Remember how we said they could win like five in a row? <laughs> <laughs> they can. Um, I don't yeah. think they're going to. Well, at this point, you have to. You have to. Yeah, I think at this you point, you got to win. You cannot lose. Um, I think you got to win six in a row. Uh, that's tough. It is tough, but you—I I think you got to win six in a row, assuming you're going to lose three in a row after that. 
Um, yeah. Because I'll be fucked. I mean, if six there's in a, a row would have them. <sighs> yeah, it would have them beating Oregon State in Oregon, who they've got next week. Then it, they would beat Stanford and Cal, and then, I mean, you get the Colorado game, which they've already beaten them once. Yeah. Um, but they've already beaten Oregon once, and yeah. Do you think and then they're then going you got to Utah. again? Then you got Utah. And I know Utah's slipping a little bit, um, but they're still a team that beat U of A. Yeah. So they're not to be messed with. Uh, for everybody on audio, going to rattle off the next couple games for you. You got Oregon State next Thursday, then Oregon on Saturday, and then you've got Stanford and Cal on those same respective days the following week, and then Colorado and Utah before you've got arguably the toughest stretch Um that any team has in the Pac-12 this season. You got three straight road games, U of A, UCLA, USC. <laughs> then it's time for Las Vegas. Um, Jeff in the chat, what if they don't win until Stanford? If they don't win until Stanford, I'm going to be... Going to get real excited about softball. These post-game shows are going to get real, uh, real short because <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I can't take losing. I don't know about you. I'm not a giant fan of losing. Oh, um, um, I hate losing. And I'm a horrible loser. Yeah. I'm, not I'm the type, if I lose something, I'm like, let's run it back. <laughs> right now. I don't care what you're time it is. the type that if you're getting your ass kicked in Madden, you quit with like two minutes left. One time, Yeah, bro. one time. One when my time. running back was going crazy Dude, on you and you lost time. all the stats. Would have been offensive player of the week. Whatever. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Uh, Vontez in the chat. Season's over. I wouldn't go that far. No, there's um, still games to play. There are still a lot of games to play, and there are still... Again, fun thing about college basketball, teams can get hot. Okay? God, you know, oh, Saturday with Kerry, I didn't even think about the fact that this team, we, we can end up having to do NIT post games. Stop it. <laughs> Stop but at least it. there'll be NIT games, hopefully in Tempe. How do you feel about the NIT? They're like bowl games. Who Literally, who gives a shit? But they're worse than bowl games. They're absolutely worse than bowl uh, games. Is it? It's the, yes. But, but I mean, it, to me. Bowl games in this, like bowl games is March Madness. Like you no. get, you get, what do you mean? No. Cause they don't mean anything. Like, like I'm talking like the fucking Gasparilla bowl. Like, like, but still you have to do, you have to accomplish a certain something. Yeah. Win five games. That's essentially what ASU has done in relatively in basketball. <laughs> like to get to 500. The NIT is like, I, I feel like it is just a half ass. Like, Oh, it's, it's the equivalent of well, a this team didn't, didn't even make the NIT last year. So I, well, it's for me, NIT is like participation trophy. That's what bowl games aren't me. I think there should be less bowl games, but I think the standard of going to any just random shit bowl game is better than going to the NIT. I disagree. Really? So you're NIT over bowl games? No, I just think they're, I think they're the same. They're, they're, they're both, they don't actually mean anything. No one, no one is there because they want to be there. They're there because they were uh, uh, not, I guess, they, they weren't good enough to make it to where they wanted to be, but they weren't just fucking god awful. Um, and no one is no one gets excited about the NIT championship or the 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 Cheez It Bowl. Like no one actually cares. I'm Team Toe Tree. Thank you on this one. Appreciate I think it. it's relative to expectations as well. That's true. Yeah, that's that is true. But yeah, there's also teams that will be happy with the NIT. Yeah, but that's that's such a lame fucking like. So is looking to, forward to the Las Vegas Bowl. I didn't say I look forward to the Las. Vegas No, but that's Bowl. what I'm saying. Like if, yeah. if, the, if your goal is the, I think if your goal is the, to, to be bowl eligible, that's the same as hoping you make the NIT. I don't think anybody hopes they make the NIT, right? Nobody goes into the season and like, you know what I really want to do? There's got to be some schools. No, that would be no. Like, Nobody's like, I really want to. Well, fuck I, the big yeah, dance. I, I, no, I want to go to the little dance. No, because, <laughs> like, because the, the prospect of an automatic bid is always on the table. So mm -hmm. either there are always going to be a chance that you can make it, I guess. Sure. Why not? Vontez. Nah, I was saying season's over. We don't win. Until oh, Stanford, yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yes. absolutely. Season's over if you don't. Yeah, um, get there. <laughs> Can you imagine this team is in the CBI? <laughs> uh, Sean, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, it's really bad, like not good, very bad. Um, vibes. I don't. I don't. There. I want to say something that's going to end this on a positive note and give Sun Devil Nation some hope. You know what the positive thing you can say is. That that game's over? I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. That the sun, the the sun the goes down and the sun comes up and it's a new day to try and win some shit. Shit, I mean, you hope so. But one day it's not. <laughs> God damn! 
<laughs> I'm over here like, yeah, guys, like let's stay positive. The sun's gonna go down. It's why, gonna why, up. why, 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 like, why, 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 JJ's right. They got a winnable game on Thursday, Sean. Yeah, they had a winnable game tonight, too. And what happened? Well, it's over. Why are we talking about tonight? It's over. Uh, because the post-game show. Well, the post-game yeah. show is over. Okay? It's over. If you enjoyed the content, give us a follow at PHNX underscore Sun Devils. Leave a like. Drop a comment. Subscribe. Maybe five-star review. We'll see you guys on the other side. You can follow me on social at Anthony underscore Toshri. You can follow Shane at Shane. You can follow Sean DePause at Sean underscore DePause. Uh, it, it, uh, 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 on fire as always and feeling like I'm in hell as always dead inside as always we'll see you Monday peace